Sarah Boyack. Well, it's clear from this debate that the Scottish Government needs to do better on tourism. It's not the industry that's in crisis, it's the Government's strategy. And tourism is hugely important to us, as colleague after colleague has stressed this morning. For us in Edinburgh, it's one of our biggest industries, and we're one of Europe's most popular destinations, but we cannot afford to rest on our laurels. And that's why the lessons of the gathering have to be learnt. I asked for the Auditor General to intervene and to investigate last year because I was deeply disturbed by the lack of transparency in the dealings of the event, the huge cost overruns and the damage done to businesses locally. And it required a series of parliamentary questions and FOI requests to unearth what exactly happened. And we now know as a result of yesterday's report that the Scottish Government knew the gathering was in trouble when it approved a secret loan to keep it afloat. That loan became a write-off and it's clear that the Scottish Government tested neither the viability nor the robustness of the business case offered by the gathering organisers. It's now also clear that the First Minister personally engaged in a round of phone calls to try and offload the company desperately trying to persuade somebody to take the company on and save the Scottish Government's face. And the Auditor General's report is damning because it identifies a lack of due process. And due process is important. It's fundamental in a democracy. Moreover, the Scottish Government and the Council didn't have a full understanding of the position before they released information about the future of the company which is absolutely galling for the 103 local businesses who were misled by the statements that were released last year. And they were left by the Scottish Government to fend for themselves, and they found out this week that another company by the organiser of the gathering, Lord Semple, at its helm, given a loan by the Scottish Government, has resurfaced again to start trading. Where is the fair treatment there for private businesses? The Auditor General is clear that lessons have to be learnt. Due diligence, clear expectations and performance indicators need to be agreed when large sums of money are being handed out. Our tourism industry deserves better. The gathering became a key part of homecoming and the Auditor General's report shows us what went wrong, but it doesn't explain why the Cabinet Secretary Mike Russell and his boss, the First Minister, acted in such a cavalier fashion. Now, it is important because there are still questions to answer. And I was astonished that the Minister couldn't bring himself to apologise for the handling of the debacle. He only got round to mentioning the gathering when challenged in his last 15 seconds of his speech uh, by Ian Smith. For local businesses, it's not getting easier because, as many colleagues have suggested, business rates are up. Now, for hotels in Edinburgh, they are hit by an average of 20%, and cafes and shops, vital to our tourism industry, are also hit. Now, when uh, myself and the Edinburgh Chamber of Commerce met John Swinney, he did give us sympathetic noises about tax incremental finance and the specific need to avoid inconsistent decisions on individual rates, but he didn't offer any comfort on transitional relief. Now, SNP members have called for reality. Rob Gibson, in particular, asked for reality. The point made by the Minister is that it ignores the extra cash that the SNP Government have taken in through re-evaluation this year. And there's a point made by the Chambers of Commerce that needs to be addressed by the Minister because they think that figure of £60 million could be higher. That's the answer that's been given to people in parliamentary questions. But the other point is that the timing of the re-evaluation is crucial. It happened when business was good, when, when the values of those properties were significantly higher than they are now. So businesses are getting a double whammy. They're getting hit by a rate re-evaluation at a point at which the, the value of their properties has plummeted and the value of their businesses is not as good, inflating values. And that has pushed up costs for business across the city. So the government is not making it easy for companies trying to deal with the salmon slump. And we've heard mention of the VAT rise. That will make... It's, it's a differential impact in Scotland, as your own figures show. Edinburgh is now a global destination, and it has taken years of work to build us up to that. We cannot be complacent, and the last thing we need is an incompetent approach. We only need to look locally at what's happening. We're reaching the anniversary of the waste dispute in our city. Astonishingly, it has not been settled a year on, and the price is overflowing bins and rubbish in the streets for tourists to see. It's not good enough. We need a more competent, engaged leadership nationally and locally. Edinburgh is one of Europe's most popular destinations, and we know there's a global recession, so everybody has to work harder. And that's why it's even more important that we have a clear focus by Visit Scotland and clear action by the Scottish Government to help generate not just tourist visits, but to help the industry survive what are really difficult times.